all of this is up for you on Canvas, the specific instructions, the material in Lecture 6.1 is also important, as is 6.2. It's all about kind of the default frame with lots of examples. Um, but I wanted to pinpoint for you sort of the key things of the paper. And so it's about the default frame. And you're going to find your own real world example of this. Uh, and so there's two parts to the to the paper, if you will. Um, you're going to take a picture of something of, a, of your example that you find yourself that shows this individualization of responsibility. The example I have for you in lecture 6.1 is this water bottle label from Crystal Geyser. Um, please recycle. Right. This is the individualization of responsibility, the default. Right. What do we need to do? Too much waste, too much plastic. People just need to recycle more. You need to recycle. Um, also, Crystal Geyser is a proud sponsor of American Forests, so they're also contributing to sustainability um, in, in that way, if you will. And so it reflects the, so you're going to find something like this and then take a picture of it. And then uh, the write-up's really short, which I'll talk about in just a sec. Um, so take a picture, make sure it's your own, make sure it's appropriate, it actually reflects the default frame, and then... Um, yeah, take the picture. So Crystal Geysers, focusing on you, you need to recycle. Um, or there's a new commercial out by Pepsi or Coke right now. Maybe you guys have seen it. And it's, uh, we are creating bottles now that are 100% recyclable, right? So as a consumer, you can feel good. You don't have to worry about buying that because it's all post-consumer material. It's all going to get recycled. That overlooks a lot. It overlooks the fact that these companies are allowed to use plastic in the first place, right? Why is Crystal Geyser worried about people recycling? Should they even be using plastic in the first place? And if they are, why don't they have to pay for that? Do you know how many millions of billions of barrels of oil go into making plastic? Who cares if it's recyclable again? How much fossil fuels are we burning in the process, right? And so, and on top of that, most people don't recycle right? 80, 90% of recycling, it, stuff's not recycled. The stuff that is recycled, a lot of it gets thrown in the trash anyways. Everyone recycling is never going to solve the problem. Focusing on individuals does not address the majority of the issue. And so you're going to find an example, say where you got it, uh, tell us how it illustrates the default frame, kind of just did that. And then you're going to talk about what's been overlooked, right? So um, for example, take shorter showers, use less water, that's great, 80% of the water in California goes to agriculture, right? It doesn't actually address, it overlooks the majority of the cause of the problem. And then kind of the last part is, what would be a more organizational or structural message that gets away from this individual focus and focuses on these broader structural barriers to sustainability, right? So, so for example, with the Crystal Geyser example, instead of focusing on individuals to recycle, it's never gonna solve the problem. Um, a more organizational structural focus would be, why don't we enact legislation that makes companies that use single use plastic bottles have to pay for that, have to offset all the oil and emissions and other things that they're using and creating or stop subsidizing companies that use plastic, stop giving them monetary assistance or give subsidies to companies that come up with alternative ways of delivering you know, food and drink items to us. Right, incentivize, subsidize the greener way of doing things. Um, right? We got to start changing these systemic, these structural issues that keep giving us the same outcomes. Just a couple other quick examples, and then and then we're out of here. New me tea. So just examples of the default frame. Um, your purchase makes an impact, right? Fair trade improves the lives of farmers and their families with a cute little kid there. So they're fair trade. Um, so uh, presumably they pay their workers a fair wage, but with fair trade doesn't actually tell you what they pay their worker workers. It might mean that they pay them a slightly less exploitative wage than someone else. Uh, one researcher told me once that the way this company was using fair trade is they said it mean what it means is the consumer, our customer is getting a fair price on the product. That is not what most of us think when we think of fair trade. So what does that even fucking mean? But you, the consumer, you can feel good about it. You don't have to worry about buying new meat tea. Um, this one on the back, right? A true model for fair trade. Um, 
on the side of the box, all sorts of stuff they're doing for the planet. In fact, we don't even need to be in this class. Numi T is basically solving environmental problems through their products. Um, it's organic, it's natural, it's recyclable, and they have programs to offset their carbon emissions. I mean, one kind of question is, why are you not using green technology anyways? Why are you still burning fossil fuels and emitting carbon and needing programs to offset that, right? Go green. Probably because it's still cheaper to use fossil fuels. Um, or bamboo paper towels, uh, nature's way. It's panda approved, right? You see that panda on there? You don't see a big Delta smelt. It doesn't say Delta smelt approved, right? Because you're not, you're using bamboo, but sustainably. So it's not like destroying the panda's environment. Feel good about your choice to reduce waste and use bamboo. Toss away guilt-free. It's chlorine-free. It's biodegradable, right? These are all... Default frame, all right? Don't, don't worry about buying this, you're fine. We're offsetting our impact. Okay, so the write-up, two paragraphs. The first paragraph, where'd you take the picture? Where'd you find it? Start looking around, it's all over the place. It's in your kitchen, in your house. Um, so, and Jean just asked a really good question. Is there a sample paper? No, because I don't wanna give you um, like the, an answer that you might come up with yourself. So read the instructions, and then after you watch lecture 6.1, if anyone has any questions or is conf I don't think you're going to be confused, but if you are, I am here. I can clarify. I will write a paper as a sample for you if we need it. I don't think we'll, we'll need it. Um, so where'd you take it? How's the message reflect the default frame? Tell us this is the message and it reflects the default because it focuses on ABC. See why I don't want to necessarily fill in the blanks for you. Um, that's one paragraph, right? Just make sure you address the questions. Um, put that info in there. And then the second paragraph is kind of two parts. What's this message overlook? So maybe it's, you know, I, I gave the example of um, water, you know, take shorter showers. It overlooks that 80% of the water goes to agriculture. Shorter showers isn't going to solve shit. So that, and then this last part is probably the hardest part, requires a little bit of critical thinking on your part. You gotta be a little creative. What might be a more organizational or structural message that doesn't focus, that doesn't default to the individual consumer, but focuses instead on these broader structural barriers. And so that part, that's kind of why I don't like to give an example because there's different ways you can go with that. If I give you an example, it might be hard to get away from the example I give. Um, so what be, be sort of creative, put a little thought into that last part. And then how it's scored. And I think you'll like this. The picture, find one, make sure it's appropriate. 20 points, that's almost half your score. And then 30 points for the write-up. Where was the picture taken? What's the message? That's 10 points. How does it reflect the default? That's 10 points. The last part, that last 10 points, require a little bit of thought, a little bit of effort there. What's it overlook? What would be a more organizational structural message? Um, turn it in complete. Don't just turn in a picture with like a sentence. So you get, you know, the points for the picture. Um, I'm not, I will not grade incomplete assignments. So automatically half, just turn it in complete. And then take it seriously. Make sure you actually find the picture yourself. Don't sort of last minute, you know, pull up a website and print it out. Um, you know, take, take the picture, put your hand in it or something if you can. Um, and then do sort of our last day of the class is Friday, July 2nd, by the end of the day. Um, just, you know, if you have questions or you're unclear, reach out. I also have office hours today. Um, I think that once we get through some of the material this week, it's going to be pretty clear for you.